change and we need to go in and start looking at the animator. Now a lot of this stuff is actually the same. The only thing that's different is that they just sort of moved a few things around and added a few extra features. Um, so to get started, let's take a look here. Um, where do we want to get started? So, so we have our animation state. So earlier in the morning, we built out three different animation states. We have uh, player walk, uh, player idle, and player uh, fire. And I do think I'm going to go off the reservation just a little bit here. Um, I don't, I don't like the way that I had set this stuff up originally, and I've come up with a much better system. Normally, the way that I would do this is, uh, how did I set this stuff up? So I had any state up here, I had walk. Uh, over here and I had fire over here and then I would just generally go through and uh, I think I just connected up walk animation first and I would do these transitions back and forth and then I would go through and set up each of the properties and what I found is that this is just really convoluted um, let me uh, let me delete these lately what I've been doing is actually taking advantage of any state a little bit better advertising <laughs> yeah I guess I have a good I have a good radio voice it's tough at night when I'm putting people to sleep and I have to whisper because of my kid hopefully the sound isn't garbled so if it, if it is garbled and uh, and messed up let me know in the comments because sometimes the uh, the, the Windows drivers gets a little screwy um, okay so what I was doing is I now take advantage of this any state and what any state will do, it allow you to, as it, as it sort of says, is transition from any state. And now I can make a transition from any state to idle and any state to player walk. It's definitely not Morgan Freeman. Uh, getting a phone call while I'm doing the live stream. And now because I'm on a Mac, like everything starts ringing and hopefully you guys don't get to see that because you're 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 safe inside of this VM that I'm running, but on the Mac side, all kinds of lights and stuff are flashing that someone's calling me. All right, so um, what I was talking about here is that I can now use this any state as a way to transition between each of these and not have to deal with these back and forth um, state machines. So here in this transition, what we're going to take a look at is by default, this is where things sort of get messed up. Um, let me take a look at my notes before I jump ahead. All right, let's start with the most basic. We need to have some sort of trigger to, to, to move from the idle state to the walk animation. Now, if we were to run this, it should just, uh, it's probably not going to do anything. It's just going to get stuck here because this doesn't, um, this doesn't loop anymore. If we go into the animator, there's a new tab here called Parameters. This used to sort of be down here at the bottom right. They've moved this up now uh, next to the layers. So by default, you have layers. Here you have parameters. And the way that it works is that I'll create uh, an integer. So we're going to create a new int here by hitting the plus sign. Do int. And we're going to call this anim state. Uh, it's spelled correctly as far as anim goes and its default value is going to be zero. So what we'll do is a player idle is going to be zero and if uh, if this is changed to one we'll transition to the walk animation. So the way that we set this up is that we click here on this transition here and we can add a condition. Um, now in the old Unity it used to automatically default to um, to an exit time and, and it was a whole sort of mess. Luckily they've gotten rid of that like now exit time is defaulted up here for some reason uh, is up here for some reason but it's no longer defaulted. Uh, I'm going to talk about these settings in a second too because they'll mess you up as well and now we just have this empty list of conditions. So we're going to create a new condition since we only have one thing it's just going to automatically populate it with the first item which is atom state. Uh, there's a drop down if you create other properties and you can create booleans and all kinds of other stuff so I, I have stuff in other games where it's like uh, there's a boolean for has gun or doesn't have gun so it shows you know the animation for gun versus walking because that's 
complicated. You can create some really, really complicated states um, with this. So luckily, this is just an introduction. We're going to come up with the basic. And I think this is where people are getting hung up on by um, in, in old in old Unity, uh, we'll just call anything before five. It used to default to equals, and now it's set to greater. Um, so you have to make sure that this says equals zero. And now the other thing that I do is you have to get rid of this transition uh, this transition duration, because what happens is that sometimes the animation I have, like luckily this guy is several fl several frames, but there's a transition here that's going to take uh, point whatever seconds or milliseconds. I can't remember what if it tells you what time, whatever the current time is. So 1% uh, of the current frame, it's going to transition. So I set this to zero, and you'll see now immediately this transition from walk animation right into player idle is going to be instantaneous. And I also get rid of this can transition to self. Um, and that's just now because of any state. We want to make sure that the value might be changing um, over time, so we want to make sure that it can transition back to itself. Uh, so once this is done, we'll save it out, and I'm going to go to this connection here. We'll set this to zero. We'll get rid of this, and then we're going to add our condition, and we'll make it equals, and we're going to make this one. So we'll hit save, and now if we run this, we're not going to see anything, right? Because we don't have any code setting this value. But the cool thing you can do while you're running the game is that you can actually set this value value manually and preview what the transitions look like. So if I was to go back to zero, it'll go back to his gun, and one will show me him walking. So let's stop this. Uh, we'll save our changes. And we're going to add a little bit of code. So we're going to go back into our player class here. We're going to create a new uh, private property, and we're going to name this uh, animator. Uh, animate, animator, and uh, we'll call this animator. And now in our awake, uh, in the book I say you start, but I, I rather put this stuff stuff that I know already exists when something is instantiated, I always get a reference to it in awake. Start is where I start, I, I'll apply values that only need to happen once once the object is about to move and it's, it's, it's on the scene and all that stuff. Uh, so here we're going to do, uh, oops, animator equals get component, uh, animator and we'll just move to the end of the line. So now we have a reference to the animator. Uh, we'll, we'll use this now to set the integer manually. So basically, if we're here and we're moving this, we're going to tell the animator that we need to set an integer. Remember, we set our uh, anim state is an integer. So there's a direct method for dealing with integers. Um, we give it the string name, which is Adam state, and the last thing is we're going to give it a value. And this is going to be a value of 1 because we're walking. Uh, here we're going to set the same value to 1, and the last thing we're going to do is that if, if we're not moving right and we're not moving left, then the only thing we could be doing is standing still. And here we'll just set the value to 0. So now let's get back into our code and run this. And now we can walk left and right. And as soon as we let go of the key, he immediately goes into that idle position. And, and I really like this. I mean, you could, you could tweak this so that he doesn't exit this walking animation until he's back at a frame that, that makes him fit better into idle. But what I love about this is it gives you that sort of slide. And we can tweak these values a little bit later so it's not so much of a slide. Like if I go into the player here, and we have linear drag, and I set this to something like 0.2. Uh, let's set it to something more aggressive, like 1. And I let go. You'll see he's going to stop. He's, he won't slide as much. Uh, the other thing, though, you'll notice, though, is that it actually he's also going to walk a little bit slower. So this drag affects 
the force that we're applying to it. So if you are going to play around with the linear drag, you want to make sure that you're actually um, changing the, the maximum velocity and the speed as well in accordance. Um, so it's a delicate balancing act. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like physics engines for 2D platformers. Um, you, you might notice a lot of platformers you play that are built on physics engines are really floaty. Like the controls just aren't tight and don't feel right. And I spend a lot of time going through and tweaking the controls as much as I can. But you still you can't get around the issue of physics engines were just not designed for uh, old school 2D platformers.